Brian Keith Terrell, 47 years old, was killed yesterday by the state of Georgia on Wednesday. This would be today, 12-9-2015. He was put to death. Uh, it didn't say how he was killed, but it was a state execution. Now, there's some discrepancies that I'd like to talk about, for, but first the case. A Georgia man was convicted of forging checks belonging to his mother's friend and then killing the man after he demanded his money back uh, was executed. So this is uh, uh, Brian Keith Terrell. It says that he was on parole in 92. He stole 10 of Watson's checks, uh, John Watson, and signed his name on them. And then Watson told the police about the theft but asked them not to pursue charges if most of the money was returned. The day he was, the day he was to return the money, says prosecutors, uh, he uh, told his cousin, Terrell had told his cousin to drive to Watson's house where he shot Watson multiple times and severely beat him. T uh, Terrell's lawyers had said that their client was innocent. They argued no physical evidence connected Terrell to the killing and that prosecutors had used false and misleading testimony in order to, to secure the conviction that drew the death penalty. So the U.S. Supreme Court, without explanation, denied a request for a stay about four hours after the 7 p.m. scheduled execution time. On Monday, Georgia Board of Pardons and Paroles had denied Terrell's request for clemency. A state court on Tuesday dismissed a complaint in which Terrell claimed innocence, and the state Supreme Court declined to halt the execution. Now, the weird Terrell... Uh, they they appealed and then they appealed again and they couldn't get the appeal. But Terrell, they said that the um, uh, Jermaine Johnson, the cousin that had actually murdered him, Sir Jermaine Johnson was the murderer. He was the trigger man, and he was his uh, co-defendant, been in jail for more than a year, facing the possibility of a death penalty when he agreed to a plea deal with the prosecutors to testify against Terrell. Johnson was allowed to plead guilty to a robbery charge and he received a five-year prison sentence. And the defense investigator wrote in a sworn statement that Johnson told her defense attorney, Gerald King, that he was 18 and facing the death penalty, pressured by police and the prosecutor to testify against his cousin. He said he'd like to give a sworn statement telling the truth, but was afraid he might be arrested, put in prison for perjury if he did. Goodwill wrote, prosecutors also misleadingly presented, misleadingly presented the testimony of a neighbor of Watson's incorrectly asserting that she had saw Terrell at the scene, Ter Terrell's lawyers wrote. So Jermaine Johnson was the trigger man. Jermaine Johnson was the one that actually killed him. The, it, while he may have been paid by the Brian Keith Terrell, Brian Keith Terrell wasn't the trigger man. Brian Keith Terrell actually didn't kill him. And so, in a way, it's almost like the person who had done the murder wasn't even convicted at all. The person who might have been the mastermind, but still didn't push the trigger. So, in a way, I don't know, this makes me think of a lot of things. It makes me think of um, Charles Manson. Charles Manson didn't kill anybody, but he's the one that's in jail. He was the mastermind, got other people to kill for him, but he didn't actually kill anybody. And it also makes me think of war. You always have politicians who send troops out to kill others, but they get away with it, and then sometimes will get into trouble. The troops will get into trouble, um, you know, for war crimes when they were put into that situation by the leadership. So it's, it seems like a really bizarre case because one man uh, who did the murder gets to get a five-year prison sentence for just robbery, but the other man who had set the whole thing up is the one that it got killed, even though he didn't pull the trigger. So, and then the prosecutors used a liar, right? They had somebody testify that he was at the house, but then the other guy said that, no, he was the one that actually pulled the trigger. So I think they went after the wrong man here. They wanted to get a conviction to this other man, so they let the guilty man pretty much go free, allowed him to kill the other guy. He gets five years prison, so it's not, you know, an easy sentence, but... The death penalty is a motherfucker.